Jesus, who loves the children and youth. When we read what it teaches, we can receive heaven's truth. It tells us that the God above has a plan for this lost world. It tells us that this God of love cares for each boy and girl. I believe, I believe, I believe what Jesus says to me. I believe, I believe in the B. I'm Jonathan and I'm Michelle and this is our program I believe where we are learning all the basic beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church today we are talking about the Lord's Supper I think I've also heard it called communion yes communion means sharing or close friendship and during this service we become closer to Jesus and other Christian friends but do you know when Jesus started the communion ceremony I remember it was right before Jesus died at the last meal he shared with his disciples. Our pastor always reads the story right before we take communion. That's right. And at this last supper, Jesus and the disciples were celebrating the Passover feast, which was a Jewish holiday that reminded people of their escape from Egypt. During this feast, they sacrificed a lamb and ate it with unleavened bread. The sacrifice was to be a reminder of the coming Messiah, which was actually Jesus. Jesus knew that after his death on the cross, this reminder would no longer be needed, but his disciples would need a way to remember that Jesus, the real Passover lamb, had given his life for them and the sins of the world. But first, he had to get them to have the right attitude. What do you mean? Did the disciples also have attitude problems like people do now? They thought Jesus was going to become king in all Jerusalem, and they all wanted to have the highest position in this kingdom. Jesus wanted to show them about humility. That means being humble, right? So what did he do? Well, in those days, people used sandals and walked a lot. So their feet got really dirty. A servant would usually help to wash people's feet when they arrived at a house. I don't think I would want that job and neither did any of the disciples. They were too proud for such a lowly job. So Jesus himself took the basin and the towel and washed their feet. Even though he was their master and king of the universe, that was a great lesson. They needed to be humble like Jesus. And when they sat down to eat, the disciples and Jesus ate the unleavened bread and drank the grape juice, which was called wine back then. That's when he told them that the bread represented his body and the wine represented his blood. Yes, he wanted them to remember his sacrifice for them. Of course, the disciples would not have understood the symbols until after Jesus died on the cross. And he used really common things. I mean, they ate bread and drank grape juice all the time, probably. So they would always remember Jesus. And that's what our sentence and scripture songs talk about today. What do I believe about the Lord's Supper, which is also called Communion? I believe the Lord invites us to celebrate Holy Communion. By doing this, we consecrate our lives in sacred union. We wash each other's feet to show we want to serve mankind. The bread and juice represent his body and his blood and help us know his love is yours and mine. Invites us to celebrate Holy Communion By doing this we consecrate Our lives in sacred union We wash each other's feet to show We want to serve mankind The bread and juice represent his body and his blood the lord invites us to celebrate holy communion by doing this we consecrate our lives in sacred union we wash
wash each other's feet to show we want to serve mankind. The bread and juice help us know his love is yours and mine. The bread we eat during communion looks a little bit like flat crackers because it's unleavened. It has no yeast in it to make it grow. Yeast, which is also called leaven, can be a symbol of sin. The bread has no yeast in it, just like Jesus had no sin in him. The drink we have during communion is often called wine, but it's actually grape juice. It isn't fermented and doesn't contain alcohol. It is pure, just like Jesus is pure. The Bible tells us that when we get to heaven, we will share a special meal with Jesus. At the Last Supper, Jesus said, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When we participate in the Lord's Supper, we look forward to spending time with Jesus in heaven for the rest of eternity. For today's science experiment, we are going to try to keep water in this glass, even when it's upside down. Here are the materials you need. A glass, some water to fill the glass, and a piece of cardstock. First, I'm going to fill this glass to the brim with water. Next, I will place this card on the cup and hold it tightly. Then, I will turn this cup upside down while holding the cardstock. Finally, I will let go and see what happens. How did this happen? The air pressure that pushes onto the cardstock from underneath is greater than the weight of the water inside the glass. So it keeps the water from coming out. It almost doesn't seem possible. Seems backwards and upside down. Sometimes what Jesus asks us to do seems backwards and upside down. Like humility. Being humble goes against our nature because it means to place someone else before us. We show humility when we wash each other's feet. But I know Jesus can help us show humility in many other ways throughout the day. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood.
it can save you a lot of time. For example, let's think about some things you have that you need to find on a regular basis. You need clean clothes to change into after your shower. You need your school books and school supplies to do your school work. You need eating utensils and plates or bowls to set the table before a meal. What if you couldn't remember what any of these things were? Think how much time it would take to find what you need and where you need to go. Remembering is important. It can protect you from danger or even save your life. For example, you know that you should handle a sharp knife very carefully because it could easily hurt you. Think about it though. That's something you have to remember. Babies aren't born knowing that they should be careful with sharp knives. That's why parents have to be careful to keep sharp knives away from babies and little children until they are old enough. Remembering is important. Jesus thought it was so important for Christians to remember his sacrifice for us that he instituted a special service called the Lord's Supper, also known as communion. The Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Will you always remember what Jesus has done for you? today. We encourage you to memorize the scripture songs every week. See you soon. The Lord invites us to celebrate Holy Communion. By doing this we consecrate our lives.